Hello, and welcome to episode three of Star Trek Mata Hari. For those who are unfamiliar, Mata Hari is a tabletop role-playing game that uses the Star Trek Adventures rule set. We are set in the year 2411, well, now 2412, aboard an Eclipse class in the Shackleton Expanse. We're also in the same quote-unquote canon as my Fenrir game. You don't need to have watched Fenrir to enjoy this game, so you probably are going to catch a few subtle references and nods if you do. You can catch the VODs for both Matahari and Fenrir on my YouTube and most of the popular podcast solutions. Uh, let's just go around and have everyone introduce themselves before we run the introduction. So let's start with the captain. Hello, I am the captain, uh, Captain Malik Javan, uh, also known as Dare Wolf. Um, hope you guys enjoy tonight's episode. Up next, our first officer. Yep. Um, my name is Nikhil. I play the first officer, uh, Commander Jara Rian. Up next, we have our tactical officer. Hello, uh, I'm Mike. I play Tave Jennings, the Romulan no Chief of Security. And then we have our intelligence officer. Oh, I'm Alex. I play Lieutenant Commander Tarek Prahl, the ship's intelligence officer. And then our science officer. Hey, I'm Jeff, and I'm playing uh, Lieutenant Commander Jack Jensen, the science officer. And last but not least, our chief engineer. I'm Brian, and I'm playing Lieutenant Commander Jim Toleyev, the chief engineer. Very nice. And with that, let's go ahead and run the introduction. Welcome back. Now, if you are completely new or you need a reminder, what I like doing for my Star Trek Adventures games is having the players do an opening monologue. And tonight we have one from Commander Jaro, our first officer. So please take it away. Sure thing. All right. First officer's log, stardate 886-81.3. Our recent misadventure with Professor James Moriarty inspired me to take an interest in classic Earth literature. I've been reading through the Sherlock Holmes stories. They're silly, but there's something compelling about them. The idea that you can solve any problem if you're smart enough, if you just get that right clue. I like the character of John Watson. He's a veteran, a simple guy with good intentions, and he's always in way over his head. I can relate. We killed a man in cold blood. Sure, James Moriarty wasn't a good man. He might even have been an evil one, but... We still snuffed him out when he was at our mercy. It burns my blood that our intelligence officer can just snap his fingers and order the murder of someone and there's nothing I can do about it but watch. The holographic members of the crew organized a peaceful demonstration against the action. They're all terrified that their civil rights could be suspended at any moment and I don't blame them. I've given them my word that the decision to terminate Moriarty without due process does not extend to other synthetic bodies. I tried to reassure them that I believe that their lives matter. But even as I spoke these words, I knew my guarantee was hollow. If Lieutenant Commander Prowl decides that these people are more trouble than they're worth, I believe he'll put them down without a second thought. It's very Cardassian of him. I don't know if the captain trusts me very much either. I think he's a very good man. He cares about his crew, but he has a vicious streak. 
He has a tendency to panic at exactly the times when I want to slow down and talk through options. But I can't put the blame entirely on him. We as a crew often pursue our own solutions to problems all at once. It leads to chaos, which leads to bad decisions, and I share that responsibility as much as anyone else. But really, how am I supposed to succeed in an environment where secrets lurk around every corner and no one seems to know who's really in charge? I intend to pray to the prophets for guidance here. I don't usually like bothering them with my sprawl problems. They get enough of that from the folks at home. But they've always done right by me when I needed them. I never would have made it out of the orphanage on Bajor if it wasn't for them. Maybe they'll help me find a place on this ship. If not, I might have to request a transfer, although that might mean a demotion. Very nice. I love it. So uh, our first scene is going to be in the main computer core. Now present in the computer core are Mr. Prawl, Mr. Jensen, and Mr. Tolayab. Uh, all of you are currently reviewing uh, the data that you have found previously about how apparently this isn't a Starfleet original computer core. This is a Romulan built facsimile very good facsimile, but a facsimile nonetheless. And you all are discussing how you might go about fixing that without needing to basically strip out the entire computer core back at Stardock. So, as I was saying, gentlemen, I could have an entire team of engineers uh, take all the isolinear chips out and switch them out, uh, ensuring that each one is up to spec but that will take us at least 25 days. Is that including all the uh, extra coding that's going to have to be done? Uh, the coding could happen independently, which means we could be coding uh, in advance and then be switching out isolinear chips. So yes, uh, the answer is yes. Okay. So have we made sure to double check the secondary core to make sure it's an official computer core? Uh, I have not done so. I have been okay. acting on the presumption that both cores are of the same make. They usually come paired. Yeah, and we would have. I, I think it would be prudent to go ahead and replace both just to be safe. That way, we don't have any surprises pop up on us later. Okay, I can. In which case, increase my estimate by approximately twelve and a half days. We could have some of my teams help out with that as well. It might help reduce some of that time. I would have to do some rapid calculations, but I believe that if the science officer lends me, let's say, 25 to 30 officers, I may be able to accomplish it in 20 days uh, for both cores. We'll have science team work on secondary core. Uh, we'll have engineering team work on primary core. And then we will, uh, we will Combine forces on re, re, uh, uh, relining the isolinear chips. But that's my best estimate. Do we know what systems could be affected in this process? Every system. Well, if we, if we are to stage it properly, we could avoid any major disruptions to any critical systems. The only ones that could be affected would be secondary systems for backups. Respectfully, I disagree. I would not trust secondary computer for uh, navigation or for uh, uh, warp, uh, yeah, warp calculations. Uh, just lacks computing power. Essentially, once we start this project, we are dead in water. I also wouldn't want to be in fight with secondary core. I can understand that. It's just then that uh, from, so you all are actually within the computer core itself and you're surrounded by those blue sort of pulsating walls of isolinear chips. Uh, from the ladder that leads into the core itself, uh, a gentleman sort of looks up and shouts, uh, excuse me, sir. We are uh, expecting a new delivery of isolinear chips today. Um, where do you wish us to put them? Well, 
There is uh, ample storage in storage container four. If well, I that is correctly. problem, actually. We are overfilling storage container four. Well, uh, perhaps leave them because we are a contemplating project. So you leave them at the base of ladder. We will deal with later. And he uh, sort of says, okay, and he goes back to, you know, doing what he was doing. And there's that moment where you're like, who the hell was that guy? And uh, it occurs to you that that is, uh, you know, like you're thinking, like, who the hell is that? Why don't you go ahead and roll me an insight engineering difficulty of zero? Just get you some momentum. Engineering. Uh, I have the etiquette. I will give you Focus. etiquette. Yes. One success, which means one momentum. You know who that was? Uh, that was Malkovich. Malkovich is a very quiet gentleman. Does his work very well. Uh, you've never had him on bad report, quote unquote. So he's always been an exceptional officer. Just a very um, private individual, usually. Uh, gentlemen, uh, while you make a decision uh, and let me know what we're doing, I will go downstairs and uh, go down ladder and deal with a box of isolinear chips. I could have sworn okay. container four would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, our lovely chief engineer uh, descends down the ladder, leaving both Jensen and Prawl alone for a moment. So uh, ugly business with Moriarty. Yes, um, I know. I believed it was probably the better course of action. Oh, I, if, I, I, I agree with you. It if, had to be done. If, if this program was able to infiltrate onto the most advanced ship in our fleet and essentially try to kill all of us, what else would he have been capable of if left unchecked? Uh, yeah, I, I, I support your decision 100%. I, I, have a feeling, right I have a feeling most of the crew, however, does not share that sentiment. Well, there is this old quote, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Vulcan, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. Uh, I, I remember seeing it uh, a couple times in uh, some textbooks when I was at the academy. That would be nice if more people would remember that. Well, those who fail to study history are doomed to repeat. Turning back to the problem of the computer core. Hmm. Yes. What systems do you think should be worked on first? Well, I, I probably our defensive capabilities and our sensors should be primary focuses. If we're going to be without warp drive, we should be at least able to defend ourselves. I would feel a little bit better if we were back closer to Narendra Station before really getting into much rework. Uh, I, I will, uh, yeah. Before we start doing a deep dive, we can go ahead and work on the coding parts of it before we start pulling the isolinear chips. That way, when we strip them, we'll be, uh, we'll be better equipped to make it as smooth a transition as possible. I think that maybe, would be in our best bet. And we could start working on maybe some of the uh, environmental controls, things that wouldn't necessarily take critical systems offline. And that, that way, uh, it might be a little uncomfortable, but we'll at least be able to move and defend. I can agree with that. I will make the recommendations to Commander Tulip, and we'll get this party started. Did you just call him Tulip? Sorry. <laughs> no, I I find it funny. I think we found a new nickname for our chief engineer. Tulip. <laughs> he smells great. <laughs> It looked like it a UI screen. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. 
Oh lord! But I'm gonna note, go with it now. Yeah, I was gonna say let's uh, let's switch scenes to actually the first officer's office where Commander Jaro and Lieutenant Commander Jennings are currently in discussion about uh, how you might prevent another Moriarty situation from occurring. Lieutenant Commander Jennings, I need your help to make me feel like. This ship isn't trying to kill us anymore. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to shake that feeling, frankly. I don't know how to help you necessarily with that. Uh, I've I've thought about this a little bit. I I don't know that there is a way to permanently stop anybody from just taking over the systems. Like it or not, this happens more than we're willing to admit, whether it's Klingons taking over the ship or some AI or some wormhole aliens or something like that. Like, this just happens. I don't know that there's a way to stop it. But dealing with it at the time, I've got some I've got some ideas. Well, uh, let's uh, let's hear your full report. All right, I'll pull up my pad. <laughs> uh, OK, so what I'm basically thinking is at the risk of being a walking stereotype, what if we set up some sort of emergency protocol that cloaks a user for a period of time? Um, I'm not talking about bending light in order to accomplish this. Instead, what if we could create some sort of protocol where uh, we could have this computer subconsciously create blind spots? Someone inputs a, a passcode, and then they could move freely about the ship without the, the computer consciously would know would not know subconsciously would be working against whoever's in command to stop them from seeing this person so like you think about com badges is the first thing uh it would obviously have to create fake signals on its own other methods like using doors hatches wall panels it would have to create fake data there as well so what you're suggesting is a way for any individual to be shielded from being seen by the ship's systems. Yeah, Moriarty could see everything that was going on. Well, that would have been incredibly useful to us in that situation, but do you have any fears that something like that could be used against us? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, uh, so what I thought about, uh, in order to limit the exposure, we'd have to limit who A, first knows about this, you, myself. I'm thinking the chief engineer because there's no way he eventually wouldn't discover something like this. Of course. And then I'm thinking maybe one outside person, someone at Starfleet Command that could verify its existence if it ever became necessary. Uh, ultimately... Yeah. Noticed you left the captain off of that list. Uh, further, uh, to prevent abuse, like you said, I think stringent security measures frequently changing the passwords to activate it and maybe frequently changing who can activate it per given day. Uh, that way, if the wrong person found out about it or if the passcode if they ever had the passcode, they'd be barred from using it. Or if one of us ever goes rogue, it would limit their ability to use it against us. My my instinct for that would be to say that then everyone on senior staff has to know about it. Uh, and that anyone on senior staff at any given time could be able to access it, but it's not all of us at any one time. It would be one per one per day or whatever the time line yeah well you can determine that i don't know but well as much as i would like to leave some people out uh i i think that uh it would be it would be it would be remiss of us to not include uh our intelligence officer and the captain and um as well as mr jensen in on the um, on this unless you have some specific reason why any of them should be excluded. I just think the more that know, the more it becomes possible that it will leak out. That's fair. Hmm. Why? So, I mean, I, I would already know about this because you already told me. I, I would be... I'd be happy to leave our, our intelligence officer out, especially since he can uh, he can countermand uh, and he seems to be willing to uh, countermand the captain's authority at, at at any given at any given moment. But he, like it or not, he is um, 
um, one of our main liaisons with Starfleet Command, I would um, I would think that if he found out we were doing this without his knowledge, um, I don't know what kind of I don't know how he would react or how he would behave. Quite frankly, yeah, we're in a situation, aren't we? Yeah, uh, we're in a situation where I'm afraid to trust members of my own crew. Um, and if that's the case, well, it makes it hard to contemplate any kind of security measure. Yep. Well, here's, here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Would you be willing to allow me to tell the captain that we are doing something? A security measure that for the good of the ship, he can't know about. Uh, permission to speak freely, sir? Uh, go ahead. I'm not concerned with his intentions. He's not the person. In fact, none of the people on this crew I, I'm frankly worried about. Okay. Um, well, if that's the case, I'd like you to... Um, run the diagnostics to see whether this the system you're talking about is even possible to, yeah. to, to run. And I'd be happy to help you out with that. Absolutely, no out. problem. All righty. So we're going to shift away from that scene and we are going to move instead to the captain's office. And uh, Captain, you are actually sort of sitting at your desk reading a report uh, when Ensign Raven sort of chimes uh, at your console and says, uh, Sir, we are getting a hail from Admiral Hamasi. Admiral Hamasi? Um, put him through to my office. Yes, sir. And appearing before you in one of the chairs at your desk is a holographic representation of the Cation Admiral, who you are assigned to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Admiral Hamasi just sort of takes a look around, says, hmm, I expected you to decorate a little bit more. I haven't had much time to do that. It's lovely to see you again. What do I owe the pleasure? Well, two major things. First, I want to hear your specific report on the Moriarty incident. Now, of course, yes, I've read your official report. I want to hear what you actually think. I... You've put me, you've caught me a little off guard. <laughs> if I may be so bold to say, Admiral. I, what I have to do. I understand, and I respect you for it. I'm at a bit of a loss right now, and I'm feeling, as a captain, if, may I speak plainly to you, Admiral? This isn't on record so far. Go for it. I'm feeling a bit at a loss. I, I want to trust each and every member of my crew. As, as I said to you when I applied for this position, I, I wanted to have my crew be my family. I wanted them to be those that I could trust deeply. And there are some on the crew that I feel and know don't trust me as of right now. So I don't know how to gain that trust. And during the Moriarty incident, there was a moment where I gave a direct order and it was overridden by my intelligence officer. Now, I've done some research into some more obscure Starfleet regulations, and I believe he acted within his own power, but it just it sets, it sits wrong with me. I, I don't know how to put it, Admiral. It just sits wrong with me. Do you like fishing, Captain? Well, I grew up on a farm. I did my fair share of fishing. I wouldn't say I like it, but I'm decent at it. Why? How about golfing? Do you like golfing? Oh, I love golf. It's an earth sport. I played much of it while I was at the academy. Well, my recommendation is to take a certain intelligence officer, take him fishing, take him on a golf course, get to know him a little bit better. Maybe mm -hmm. that hostility between you two will die down. Interesting. So humanize him. See him as a human, another person, as it were, as the humans may say, versus just an officer of my crew. That would be my advice, yes. Spend more time with them personally. 
Why didn't I think of that? I should, I should have thought of that. I guess that's why you're the admiral, and I'm just a captain. So there you are. But I, I do not begrudge him, and I want to say this on record or off, that I do not begrudge him for the actions he took. I do believe he was acting in the best interest of the crew. I just, it doesn't set well with me uh, what happened. So. No, dude. Well, the second item is much more, shall we say, uh, light in content. We are detecting in a system designated 2B9S, there is a binary star that is apparently collapsing in on itself. We'd like oh. the Matahari to go get sensor scans of this. Should be a fairly easy assignment for you. Uh, when do you want us to report back? Whenever you feel is a uh, sufficient time. Um, one other thing that I would like to report to you, um, and I feel it is important, we did discover that our computer core um, was of Romulan design and Romulan make. Um, I do and remember I'm, reading that in your report, yes. Uh, does Starfleet have any recommendations on how to handle it? I do have my chief engineer, our um, science officer, and the intelligence officer looking into it, but any advice that you could give us from Starfleet Command would be greatly appreciated. Well, Captain, it is sort of at your discretion. We could probably handle it if you came back to Narendra Station. However, uh, you would possibly miss this binary star collapsing in on itself. So I'll leave it up to you. I'll take it into advisement, and uh, I'll send a report to you on what we decide here um, within the hour. Very good. Unless there's anything else, Captain? All set. Thank you for your time, and thank you for letting me speak freely. And of course, Hamasi out, and her hologram just sort of shimmers and disappears. Captain to the chief engineer. Tolea, Pierre. Tolea, uh, what's the word on the computer core? Uh, we discussed with science officer and intelligence officer, and uh, there was some disagreement as to uh, the, the route we would take, so I left them to make decision and uh, advise me. We've been assigned to investigate a uh, collapsing binary star. Um, based on the repairs that you're going to be making, will we still be able to maneuver and um, head out? It depends on whether you want to use suspect computer to you do those things. Interesting. I'll get back to you. Um, Captain to Ensign Raven. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I send the computer coordinates to her for the binary system. How long would it take us to get there uh, at warp five? Warp five just put us there three days, sir. Three days. Captain to chief engineer. Uh, to to Lapier. <laughs> can you give me three days? Well, you can have. Captain, it's your ship. You take as long as you like. Uh, but. Again, uh, you're using computer that we don't uh, we don't uh, have the best understanding of what its purpose is. Fair enough. Ensign Raven. Yes, sir. Set in a course for the binary system. More five. Yes, sir. All right, and then um, I will send a message via the uh, like just computer system to all my uh, chief staff on what we're uh, planning to do. Just send that off to them, to their uh, little PDAs and whatnot, or their, their little computer systems that they have, and uh, sit back and see if the uh, see if the replicator works for me and order a wine. Yeah, it actually <laughs> works this time, funnily yeah. enough. <laughs> I will sip that wine and think about life. Very good. So our next scene is actually going to be in, let's call it Midnight, your uh, premier club that you have aboard. And uh, basically, I'm going to throw a few of you guys into the scene. I'm going to let you guys decide who you interact with. But uh, I thought it would be interesting if we had Mr. Jaro there. I thought it would also be interesting if Mr. Prawl was there doing whatever Mr. Prawl does. And then uh, for extra, perhaps, drama, I thought we might include Mr. Jensen. So, uh, Prawl, Jensen, Jaro, 
You all are in Midnight, your quote-unquote premier club aboard the Mata Hari. It is essentially a jazzed-up version of Ten Forward, where you have actual dance floor, you have flashing neon lights and strobe lights, you have a heavy techno beat uh, that's maybe mixed with a little ska. It's, it's some Andorian thing. It's a very odd mixture, but, you know, people are dancing to it, so it must be somewhat good. Uh, the liquor is flowing freely. Your emergency bartender hologram is performing at capacity. Uh, it's a good, it's a good happening time as it were. And, uh, we'll, we'll sort of pick on Jensen here. Jensen, when you walk in, uh, you see Mr. Prawl sitting at the bar. You see mm-hmm. Titania, uh, Ambassador Titania. She is sitting at a, uh, a booth on her own. And then you see a few booths down from that. You see... Commander Jaro at his own booth. I'm going to let you guys take it from there. All right. Well, I'm going to head over to the bar and I'm going to order a Romulan cocktail. Okay. So, of course, when you uh, get to the bar, the bartender, who is literally Robert Picardo, says, Please state the nature of the beverage emergency. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to order a, a Romulan sunset. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'm going to go start a conversation up with uh, Mr. Prawl. Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, any word on what we're doing in this binary system? I haven't actually heard anything about it yet. <laughs> well, I, I, hope, uh, I hope we actually make it there. I don't think our systems are quite that bad now that we don't have Moriarty infecting them. Yes, the computers are a little suspect, but nothing's been trying to kill us since we took care of that. That is true. Uh, I'm going to spend two threat because I find it funny. (laughs) You see that. And uh, the computer across the entire, so the entire ship goes to red alert suddenly. And I'm not just doing this to push this button. I want to be clear here. There's a reason for this. So Uh as the ship goes to red alert, Uh um, Jennings, would it be fair for me to say you have an anti-Klingon program ready? Yeah. So what happens is across the ship, as it goes to red alert, the anti-Klingon program activates (laughs) Except instead of it being anti Klingon, actual holographic Klingons emerge in midnight. And we're actually gonna go into a little bit of combat here as I uh, as I get some Klingons on screen for you guys. It better be dance fighting. While, while he does this, <laughs> can I give you guys my impression of what uh uh, uh techno ska would sound like? Because I'm thinking it's yeah. I'm yeah. thinking it's boots and cat and boots and cat Boots and cat and boots and cat Anyway, that's what I've been doing this whole time. I I think that has to be a thing now. That is that is exactly what it is. Just a Fantastic. bunch of trumpets and some beats. You got two weeks to work on that and present us the perfect <laughs> volume. I want, a, I, say, I want an album. <laughs> At least a demo. <laughs> Oh, Lord. But yeah, uh, just as a reminder, the way uh, combat works in Star Trek Adventures is the players get to choose who goes. Then it goes to the enemy, then back to the players and vice versa until everybody's acted. And then we start a whole new round. So, um, Prawl, Jensen, Jaro, or even Titania, which of you would like to act first? So I just want to throw out there, um, I had a talent that I forgot to use last time mm-hmm. but essentially it's called quick to action and it means that my anytime we want to hold the momentum or like take the uh that's not what i mean so when Basically, one of us you go, can have people act back to back is what you're getting yeah at. we can have people back to act back to back once for free mm-hmm. usually uh, it costs momentum but we can do it once for free i just want to make sure like nice it's out there so um no very nice um, um, is it pretty clear that these guys are holograms? Oh yeah, like you saw them shimmer into place, and they have even hollow batlets ready to go. Oh fun! Oh. 
Quick question. It's just there, right? Like no one else is knowing. Mm, I would say that the Klingons have only manifested in Midnight. Okay. Fantastic. All right. I will, uh, I'll, I guess I'll jump into action here, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to order, I'm going to use my direct action. I'm going to order you, Jensen, to, um, to um, disable the hollow emitters in this, in this room. You know, use your like hack, like, you know, cut into the manual computer override and get that, um, get these hollow emitters down if you can. Yeah, I was, was going to think something very similar. So yeah, try and shut it down or at least give us an advantage in some form or fashion. I like it. I like it. Let's have you do a daring science uh, difficulty of three. Uh, but since this is a direct, uh, Mr. Jaro can assist you with a presence command. And I have a computer focus. Most definitely would apply. So it's daring. Why is it? Oh, there it is. Where did it go? Hey, there's the three successes you need. So I think we just need oh. Jaro's assist, and we're good to go. Or no, that that's Jaro's roll. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And he rolled two, which he shouldn't have. That's okay. We'll take the first roll. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're fine. Sorry. It's been a month. It's there's a little jitters. Yeah, okay, yeah, so. Uh, this is interesting. We have two successes, which means I can either take two threat or I can give you guys a complication for that to succeed. Or um, you can just simply I fail. Think... So I have the advisor trait. And then then you may reroll that zero. Okay, you can reroll -re your zero. Okay. So let me bring up my... There so I'm just going to roll one die this time, right? Correct. Focus. It's not a complication. Ooh. No! It, it, why did I Ooh. say it? <laughs> you put it out there! Ooh. <laughs> oh. So this time, I'm going to turn to the captain for a complication idea. Let's say that you are a security program designed to put down resistance in the ship. What would you have Klingons do in this instance? Uh, what's the Klingon war scythe that they have? That that's the Batleth. Yeah, they all manifest Batleths and go into like a Batleth like battle, like cry and like start just like attacking everyone. Okay, then yeah, that super is visceral. Yeah, that is what's going to happen. Is the Klingons <laughs> uh, with their Batleths in hand begin a uh, Klingon war chant and begin starting to attack anything and everything that isn't Klingon around them. So what I'm going to say is the Klingons are actually going to be rolling at a decreased difficulty uh, for their next attack, mm. which should be interesting. Uh, now, you can retain the initiative and another player can go or it can simply pass to the Klingons. Do we do we want to retain the initiative? I think that we, we I might... think it's very vital that we actually do. Yes. Um, do we want to retain the initiative for you to try that again? This Gosh. time without my help, but yeah. okay. What do you think, can... Alice? Um, yeah, we should definitely retain the initiative. Yeah. I do have an idea to try. I don't know if it'll work. Those are I, the best comments. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. Try it. Yeah. All right. Gonna basically trip the combat to try and get to somebody on the bridge. Yeah, uh, we'll say you get uh, you get the captain. Captain here. <laughs> there are holographic Klingons in midnight. Can we disable red alert? Sure, disable the red alert. Why are there holographic Klingons in in our nightclub? I don't know. Can we find out why? <laughs> I'm fairly sure we can figure out why. Do they pose an immediate <laughs> threat? 
captain you hear in the background just klingon war chanting and it's failing me i can't remember the war chant but you just hear them going to town you hear people uh, screaming no, captain, captain, to, uh, captain, to, oh. captain to security send a security team to the nightclub <laughs> hi captain <laughs> let me know once it's resolved captain L. <laughs> Yeah, Prawl, that I'll say that takes a minor action to do. So you still have your full action to do something. So having them cancel Red Alert did not get rid of them? Unfortunately, no. You guys will be fine. But I will say that since you've disabled Red Alert, the Techno Ska has come back. So now you've got a light show going, and it's reflecting off of the bat list. Is there by any chance a weapons locker in Midnight? Yes, there is. It's behind the bar. I am jumping over the bar. Okay, you jump over the bar. The EBH looks at you and says, I'm pretty sure this isn't a beverage emergency. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore it. Go for a phaser. All right. You are Robert able Picardo to uh, pull out a type two phaser. And I'm going to target the closest Klingon and try to hit it. All righty. Now, uh, since you used your miner to get over the bar and get the weapon out, um, you're not able to charge the phaser, which would have let you hit all of them. But you still get the one attack on one of the Klingons. So go ahead and roll me a control security difficulty of two. Alright. And I have handheld phasers as a focus. Most definitely. Interesting, interesting. Do you wish to re-roll that? Meaning you would have to spend your determination, but... I'm going to hold on to my determination for now. Holding on to it. All right, so Prawl, you leap behind the bar, pull out the Type 2 phaser, pop up from the bar and fire at one of the Klingons, and you just add to the light show, unfortunately. Like, it's just it's just another <laughs> beam of light that's strobing in this place. Um, so it's now going to be the Klingons' turn, and I'm actually going to spend some threat here for them to act back-to-back. -back. Uh, so let's move Prawl here. Oh. So Prawl, you're actually more about here... Uh, Jensen, you're more about here. Jaro and Titania are where they should be. So, Jensen, uh, a Klingon does come up to you. And mm -hmm. another goes for, let's say, Jaro. Mm -hmm. So let's resolve cool. Jensen first. So, Jensen, I need you to roll me a daring and security, please. Difficulty of one. Well, this is going to go great. I'm sure it'll be <laughs> fine. Yeah. All right. And the good news is that the number to beat, you need two successes here. Right. Maybe that's not good news, but... I was going to say, I don't know if that's good news, <laughs> but all right. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, that I is... thought I would do. <laughs> well, no, this is, uh, this is interesting because uh, I actually get to hit you with this. So this is going to be five challenge dice. This could hurt. Oh my god. Uh, you're going to take eight stress of damage as the oh. Klingon literally slices your chest open with the Batleth. Now, you're not dead. You are injured. Nope. You are basically bleeding out on the floor of midnight. Cool. Somebody is going to need to get over there and perform first aid on you. I'm sorry. It feels like I keep doing this to you. And I'm so yeah, you sorry. kind of do. <laughs> well, what so can you sorry. do? All right, so you're technically out of combat, but now we have to do Jaro. So Jaro, you also are doing a daring and security. Oh. Uh, your number to beat is actually rather good. Uh, you only have to roll one success. All right. And security. Me. Would a would composure be a focus I could use here? I'll give it to you on the reasoning that you know this is you not like falling into like fight or flight. This is you keeping your composure and you know acting based on what the scenario was unfolding. Whoa. Okay. So. So you do succeed, mm -hmm. and you get a point of momentum. Cool. Um. But there's a complication. I think I know what I want the complication to be. 
Uh, but go ahead and roll me your unarmed damage, which should be five for you. All right. I don't think I've ever done that before. Is that just five challenge die? Yep, five challenge dice. Okay, so if I just go challenge dice, five, minutes. All right, so that is currently four damage. Now, you could spend a momentum to re-roll those zeros if you so wished. If you um, get above, I'm going to go ahead and do up, that, I yeah. think. So say if you can get above five, that's an injury, and he'll be down for this count. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that is re-rolling two of those, right? Yep. Very there nice. Total of seven damage. So, Jaro, you maybe stand up. And uh, the Klingon comes at you with his Batleth, and you just sort of, in a Bajoran sort of fighting style, which the name of which is escaping me, you literally drive the palm of your right hand up into his chin, and his head snap back with a sickening crunch, and the holographic Klingon uh, falls to the ground and disintegrates into nothingness. So Thanks. you have effectively handled one Klingon. All right. So, uh, that is the Klingon's turn, which means we now return to, uh, well, who hasn't acted at this point? Oh, Just Titania, Titania. hasn't acted. Uh, so Titania is going to step up to the Klingon and, um, just sort of cocks her head at it, at them and says, now you're not supposed to be here. And, uh, she goes for a eight, four, seven, two style slapping, so, uh, Taleup, since you are not in the scene, why don't you do the rolling for uh, Miss Titania? Her sheet should be available to you underneath the NPC folder at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, she is rolling a daring and a security, and it looks like she does have a hand-to-hand -hand combat focus. All right, one success. Let's see what the Klingons do. Ooh, so that's interesting because the Klingons actually have gotten more successes, so they are going to get an attack on her. Good news, it only does two damage, so... Uh, wait, I... she has a talent of auto of massive strength, which gives her an auto success. Ooh, so in that case, two. yes, you would succeed. So yes. let's see, go Please ahead and have read her... Your character sheets. Yeah, I was say, gotta love the character sheets. Uh, go ahead and have her do her unarmed attack, which I think is five for her. And let's see, that's an effect, and she has Vicious One. So yes, so Titania steps up, literally backhands a Klingon so hard that they go spiraling through the air and fall to the ground and similarly disintegrate. So I think the only Klingon that's up remaining that hasn't acted is this one in the back here. And he is literally going to take his Batleth over his head and then throw it at Lieutenant Commander Prawl. So they are going to be doing a control security. And they actually get it. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's so Prawl. You're going to take five damage and be similarly injured as this Batleth literally embeds itself into your chest, missing your heart, thankfully. Uh, but it is <laughs> in your chest, sticking out of you as you slump to the ground behind the bar. And because I find it funny, the EBH turned to you and says, now this might be a beverage emergency. <laughs> but uh, we basically reset turn order at this point, And because a Klingon just acted, uh, Jaro, you're the only player character able to act at this point unless you would like titania to go again i'm like the last i'm like the last person stand so when i knocked out this klingon was mm -hmm. is, is was his bat left left behind unfortunately well i'll tell you what if you give me a momentum and a threat i will say his bat list stay behind no I <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Just... nope <laughs> I mean, otherwise, I'm 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 unarmed here. I I need to dive dive over there mm -hmm. and get it. Um, you know what? You know what? I'm gonna do it. I will. I will. Well, if 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 this is the group's momentum, so I don't want to spend it. You could give spend me just it. two threat. No. <laughs> 
Okay, okay. I'm getting a very disapproving look, so I won't do that. I will I will then grab I I guess I'm gonna have to improvise. I will mm -hmm. grab a a chair and I will like haul ass over to where um poor Jensen is down mm -hmm. and just try and smack that going on over the head. All right. The head. Daring security, difficulty of one. And let me see how the Klingon does. Uh, Klingon only has one success, so yeah, you just need to roll the one. Personally, I think you'll do it, but who knows? Oh! Ooh. Let's spend the other momentum. Every time, every time. I'm going to spend the momentum <laughs> to re-roll. Well, you can't. You can't re-roll with momentum. You'd have to use your determination. Why can't you guys leave combat to the professionals? Because <laughs> we're not um, there. Um, so I'm going to... I will... I don't want to. I don't want to pick up that complication. I'll use my determination. Let me see here what value might... Maybe, if I have a value that might mm -hmm. apply. I, like, uh, I am a professional. I just... I don't, really, I don't know if they would all be stretches. So uh, I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to have to keep it. Yeah. Jensen, I would like you to describe what happens as Lieutenant Com or Commander Jaro is basically going hand to hand with this Klingon. What happens that is a negative effect or negative outcome to his success? Well, he's trying the traditional uh, break the chair over the back, but we're in Starfleet, and we don't have them chairs, so it's going to bounce back. I like it. <laughs> okay. I like it. So, Jaro, uh, let's treat this like an improvised weapon. Uh, roll me two plus your security, and half of what damage you roll will bounce back to you. Okay, so it is um, two, two plus my security. So my security is four, so that's six dice. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you are able to not quite break the chair over the Klingon's back, but you put him down. Yeah. Uh, but as the chair bounces back, it hits you in the nose and you have that sort of like funny feeling where everything tastes weird for a moment yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you take three stress worth of damage, but you do put the Klingon down. Okay. Which, uh, now that it is the Klingon's turn remaining, the Klingon, which threw his Batleth, is going to pull out his Diktog dagger, and he's going to start running at you, Jaro, and is going to literally leap over the center Dabo table and try to like go for a, a sort of a, a plunging strike from, from height, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you're going to do another daring security. The number to beat here, you need three successes. I need three successes off of this daring security. Okay, I'm going to spend the momentum mm -hmm. for an extra dice. Okay. Um, so I'm going to roll daring security. Gonna be I also doing... love that every time I do a joke encounter like this, it kills people. So... <laughs> joke encounter. Come on. Is it good? Is it good? No. No, that's that's only one success. Do you want to reroll with determination? I I do. So let me let me run my values. So mm. I got through faith I will endure anything. I would like to to whisper a prayer to the prophets to please don't let me get killed off a off a Klingon holograms. I survived so much. I do not want this to be the way I go out. I'll let and it happen. Okay, I'll uh, re-roll. So that will be two. It can technically be as many as you want. Okay. Um, I'll just re-roll those two and keep that one success. All right. Bring security. I believe in you. Come on. You can do it. Damn it. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh goodness. Oh, dear. All right, who are who am I picking on? Let's still pick on Jensen. Jensen. Oh god. <laughs> what would the complication to Jaro not defending be? Oh, not defending? 
Yeah, let's say so, that his defense, his dodge, or his parry, his block is unsuccessful. Uh, so he's, I would say he loses his footing in this dive attack and it's going to the ground. He's being knocked down. I love it. Yeah. All right. So let me roll damage on the dagger. Uh, what is that? That is a grand total of only three dice. So yeah, Jaro, you are going to be, uh, a, a tag dagger is going to plunge into your upper chest thankfully missing most major organs. Um, and you're going to take three stress damage as you are knocked to the ground and the Klingon is standing over you, ready to stab again. And uh, to lay up, since you're controlling Titania, what's Titania doing? Uh, I think she'll dive tackle the guy. <laughs> All right. That'll be another daring security. Uh, while simultaneously looking down and saying, you'll owe me. The ship is trying to kill me. I told you. I mean, it killed everybody else. I don't know why you feel singled out. <laughs> You're the only one standing. Guess what? Oh, damn. <laughs> Let me roll to see how much momentum you guys get. And that's how you roll dice. Cool. You, she just uh... mucks this guy. <laughs> she mucks this fool. Yeah. I'm going to say, so you guys get three momentum. And why don't you describe on what Titania does with the Klingon? Because he's. Uh, because it amuses me very much. He gets pinned to the Dabo table. And she's so mad that she just keeps going. And so the top half of him separates across the table from the bottom half. <laughs> and the hollow emitter doesn't catch up as quickly. So for a minute there, they're they're both sort of existent. And then they sort of <laughs> shimmer out of existence. And then the crowd yells, Dabo? <laughs> Dabo! <laughs> All right, so we're out of combat. Uh, at this point, of course, late to the party, uh, Lieutenant Commander Jennings, you and we'll say uh, the emergency uh, security officers emerge into into midnight, and you just see Jensen on the floor. You see Prawl behind the bar. Uh, you see the emergency bartender hologram is literally just pouring liquor onto Prawl's wound. Like he doesn't know what to do. He's just like here. Uh, where are you? There you are. I was like, where is your token? But uh, quick, yeah. quick question I'm meaning to ask: Does this ship have holodecks? Uh, it does yes. have holodecks. Yes. Okay, and is this technically like after hours? This is technically after Alpha Shift, yeah. Okay, Jennings is drunk. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna stand in bewilderment for a minute and be like, "What happened?" I'm not. I'm not knocked out, am I? I'm no, still, you just took three shots. I'm still conscious. Okay, well, immediately. I mean, most important thing is to get Prowl and Jensen to the med bay. It's also okay. worth noting that Jensen and Prawl aren't knocked out. They were just unable to act in combat. So you okay. guys are so conscious. Okay, sure. We're just hurt really bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a bat left in my chest. Oh, so the, 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 weapons are, the, the weapons are still there, but the Klingons disappeared? Correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, I so I could, I could, profusely. could I recognize this as my program? Yes. Okay. I'm going to come over and stare at the Klingon bat left for a minute. <laughs> You're still alive? Wow. I need to work on that program better. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I'm going to call for a EMH or med team. Okay. I was going to say, we should have been able to get an EMH in here if the hall emitter. Yeah, I was going to say, the EMH appears and uh, begins performing first aid. It's going to do Jensen first. Uh, Jensen, you're back up. So the, uh, the emergency medical hologram doesn't even ask what's the nature of the medical emergency. He's advanced enough say? to know. Uh, he literally takes a, a sealant foam, as it were, and seals up the wound and then does a dermal regenerator across it. And you feel right as rain. A little stiff, but you'll be fine. And then uh, as the emergency medical hologram moves over to do the same for Prawl... I'm going to roll one extra die here. Okay. Uh, Jennings, drunk as you are, you notice that the emergency medical hologram is very acting very oddly when it comes to Prawl. As in, yes, it's going through the motions of repairing his wound and getting rid of the hollow batleth, but 
even with your perhaps limited medical knowledge, you know that that's not maybe the best way to go about it, if that makes any sense. Okay. Um, doc, tap, 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 tap. <laughs> Is that the best thing you could be doing right now? I am performing triage. Are you sure? I am performing triage. Anybody else here know triage? Yeah, he's he's prioritizing <laughs> who he wants to help. Uh, I have emergency medicine. I actually do have emergency medicine as a focus. <laughs> you certainly then could come over and attempt your own medical uh, sort of work on Mr. Prawl. Well, I was going to say, uh, I could, uh, yeah. Why don't you roll me a, uh, let's call this a control and a medicine, difficulty of one. All right. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at that. I believe you guys are at a total of five momentum at right now. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Jensen, you know what to do. You basically take the kit from the EMH who's being useless and get <laughs> Prawl back up and running, no problem. Thank you, Jen. As I do that, I was going to say, what were you saying about those computers now? I think I'm just going to stay quiet. Oh, I get it. That was a dig. <laughs> it's going to turn to the uh, emergency bartender. A bottle of canar. Two. Well, I'm glad someone is drinking this stuff. I have five crates of it. And he goes to fetch a bottle of Kinar. And yeah, uh, I think that's a, uh, a good point to take our break. Mm -hmm. So we will be back in 10 minutes. Everybody stick around.
holographic cat on a ship who has had multiple holographic images attack us. Correct. I, I'm I'm sure that'll be fine. Uh, but, fine. But, uh, uh, yeah, one. welcome back, everybody, uh, to is... part two of uh, session three of Matahari. If you missed the first part, there's misgivings amongst the crew. Uh, apparently, there was just a Klingon rave that happened in the nightclub of the uh, Matahari. And uh, it's been about a day later, and some of the officers are expressing their, shall we say, misgivings to the captain and the rest of the senior staff. And we'll say that this is your quote unquote daily stand up where, you know, you roll in at about nine o'clock and you're like, where's that damn coffee kind of a thing. <laughs> All right. So Jensen, what happened at the club? We have a serious issue. Captain. Tell me more. So the computers, as we as was explained, we thought we had isolated the issue when we got rid of Moriarty. That appears to not be the case, as we have had more issues with holographic images attacking crew members. Well, I don't know if it's entirely a computer problem. Did, 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 this, did the security chief tell you why it was he was Klingons? I mean, I assume it's a drill of some sort that he runs his people through. That I need to work on better. Mm. Yes, yes, but have you seen that there are six tetraquads of data on his security drills? That's a good 16th of the computers. Uh, so explain the red alert and the images just appearing out of nowhere. Well, the computer miscalculated an access problem Instead of accessing the standard uh, warp uh, warp bubble uh, oscillation, it accidentally a accessed a security drill program stored under a decidedly misleading title of porn. What is porn? <laughs> Mr. I Lenny, still... are you suggesting that this wasn't just an accident, that we're over our problems of this? Oh no! Computer still very broken, but not uh, not uh, malicious anymore. Uh, I uh, beg to differ. As do I. <laughs> I don't understand this. I have no problems. You don't have Batlas flying at you. Well, yeah. you don't either right now. <laughs> no, but I did <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Yes. In if you are looking we, for an answer, oh, sorry, go ahead. In the club where we had the ambassador who was also placed in danger, I might add. Yes, I watch video. Very good. I'm glad we can entertain. Actually, yeah, I watched the video too. I'm wondering if she could join my security detail because she beats you guys so much. <laughs> You're not wrong. Is there any way we could guarantee that something like this wouldn't happen again? Uh, do you mean specifically not be attacked by Klingons in a club or like not have life threatening events on ship? Not have Let's go with life, the second threatening, one. life threatening things directed at us by the ship's computer. Oh, well, uh, yes and no. Uh, we would have to stop immediately and I could shut down computer core. Okay. Would we be able to perform our core functions with the computer core shut down and replaced by manual, uh, this manual interface until we uh, are sure that we're safe? Well, core systems like life support uh, and backup power have, have a, 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 I don't know words. Uh, yes, they have redundant systems, so uh, they don't need computer to run all time. Uh, however, uh, we can't trust secondary computer or primary computer. So I would say uh, that would be all we would have is uh, backup power and life support if we shut down computer. Unless we went back to Starbase. Right. Right. Yes. Which... I think is the uh, best course of action. 
I, I agree. Think, where? I agree. How long would it take? I agree with that. To the nearest star base. I mean, my team can handle it. Plus, binary star. I absolutely think you could handle it. I also absolutely think we'd be sitting ducks if um, if anything threatened us out near these binary stars, and I'm not willing to take that risk. Look, for your safety, I disable entire hollow system. Okay, but if another ship comes by, am I supposed to just lean out the window with a hand phaser? Uh, no, you could throw a photon torpedo out of uh, shuttle bay. You yeah. are good at shooting things. Yeah, that good. Well, what do you think, Captain? Oh, well, my order is that we're going to the, the binary star, but I appreciate all your feedback. Your permission to speak freely. Permission denied. I just, OK, I sulk. I have a suggestion uh, for while a uh, ship is uh, out of commission for during uh, binary star collapse. Oh, I have no intent to shut down the computer system at this point. We're going to be heading back to dry dock after we go to the binary star. That is interesting uh, idea. All right. This Fine with me. Seems like we're combining the worst of all possible options. Question. You're entitled to your opinion. Do you have a question. How many binary stars are in the Quadrant. Not many. More than two? More than two. How many Mata Haris is... are in the squadron? Say again? How many Mata Haris are in the squadron? Just the one. Mm. Mm. Well then, uh, permission to return to engineering, sir. Granted. Uh, we'll just, you're all dismissed. I'll get up and I, I walk out very quickly. All right, and I'll, I'll say that that actually gives, with the captain departing quickly, uh, that lets all of you actually have a moment to discuss without the captain being privy. Hard to ask, do you got any more Kanar? What are we supposed to do here? We all agree that this is a... Well, Mister, not you, Mr. Talia, but the rest of us all agree that this is a, this is a crazy course of action, right? This is reckless yes. and dangerous in the most severe way. Why Why is he insisting that we do this? That is a good question. Is it possible he's also a holographic AI? I mean, I suppose, but uh, we would find traces of that in computer. Could you do a... Well, could you do a... How Wait, are you seriously the considering that the... <laughs> Did I not just say I shut down the entire holo system? If he were a holographic being, he would already be shut down. What if just, he has I'm emitter? just spitballing. Just spitballing. Just saying, could have a mobile emitter. Uh, all mobile emitters are tracked by computer. Or he could simply be exerting his authority over the ship and the rest of the crew right. unhappy a, with what's been going on that yes i've been a part of but in a way that puts our lives at risk it doesn't seem like him oh i, mm, I don't know about that it just it matches his track record so far well i don't know that you have room to criticize So I have a very important question. Are you going to be disabling the hollow emitters or not? Oh, I already, I, I theory I already did. Okay. So when you disable the holographic emitters, I'd like you to roll me a control and an engineering difficulty of two. Okay. Um, Focus on computers? Oh, yeah. Hey, two successes is all you need. So as you're disabling them, you actually see that when you turn them off, something on deck one deactivates. Oh. It's the captain's cat. 
<laughs> it can't wear mobile emitter. Is it? Okay. Uh, I go to the captain's cabin in order to have a conversation with him. All right. And when you step into the office, there is no captain. I uh, patch myself through to Jennings and go, um, so remember that crazy idea you threw out there? Which one? I've had a lot. <laughs> the one about the captain being a hologram? Uh-huh. Uh, I need you to please um, run a security scan across the ship for the, the, for the captain. Okay. 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 Reason security <laughs> difficulty of two. <laughs> and don't worry, the captain and I have talked a little bit about this. Uh, applicable focus. Uh, no, I think so. Bummer. Would you like to use determination to reroll that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's still only the one success. So I'm going to say that uh, you only are able to determine is that the captain is not aboard with that. My mind immediately races to my security protocol suggestion from earlier. Maybe he beat me to the punch. All right. Do you, um, do you relay this information to me that the captain is? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah OK. Um, I immediately, so I head to the bridge and, and give orders to Raven to cancel the, um, to cancel our course towards the binary star Ooh. and, and redirect to move towards the nearest star base. Uh, Finally. and then I also order a, um, I order a shipwide manhunt for the captain. All right. So, who all is participating in this manhunt? Jennings. Yeah, who, who are you letting in on this? Uh, oh, all of the senior staff. And you immediately countermand his orders? He's gone for five minutes. He's not just gone for five minutes. He's not appearing on the ship's sensors. And the the evil, the the Captain Imposter, <laughs> Captain Imposter wanted this evil. To I, so yeah, to I'm Leif, really overruling it because that's what that guy wanted to do. To Leif will, will also query the computer to where the location of the captain. You may now uh, roll a reason security of your own difficulty of two. Uh, computer focus. Oh yeah. Hey. To lay up. Mm hmm. The captain did not join the Matahari at Narendra Station. Meaning, the captain up until this point has been a hologram. Wow, that was a blind guess. <laughs> hmm. I. Uh, to lay up to. Uh, to Commander uh, Jaro. Yes. Uh, I have good news and I have bad news. Which would you like first? <laughs> Start with the bad news and then to the good news. That usually makes me feel better. Okay, so the bad news is uh, that uh, we don't, we never actually had a Captain Jovan on board the, <laughs> the Matahari. Say that again. What? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> so, so yeah, it, it turns out that uh, the computer confirms that uh, it never actually had Captain Jovan's life signs on board. So uh, that pack led that's been giving us orders. He may have been. <laughs> he may have been a holographic being uh, the whole time. Now, for the record, that does not make him not a being. I agree, but uh, what's the good news? Oh, you don't have to search ship for captain anymore. <laughs> 
<laughs> two nights ago, two nights ago, I wrote up a request for a transfer and or uh, resigning my commission. So I, I have several questions. Uh, you have I questions. Not, yeah, yes. So first, my first question is, haven't we had contact with Starfleet Command since then? Uh, why does our intelligence officer not know that our captain Supposedly. is still standing on Narendra Station going, where's my sheep? Not only that, but, you know, I believe that, that Starfleet Command has been in contact with this captain, has had conversations with whoever it was that <laughs> was impersonating him. Now, if it was the ship's computer core, I'm sure it could have done a pretty good job fooling them. Now, I'm worried that the actual Malek Jovan is, is indisposed, um, uh, possibly dead. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I just had an idea. Maybe that is why intelligence officer gave order and ship listen. Hmm? Because intelligence officer know that captain not real. All right, uh, senior staff in the in the staff ready room. <laughs> oh, oh, also the ready room. Engineering, uh, but then you did not hear that. Everybody, stay calm. <laughs> uh, uh, do a uh, dilithium crystal. Uh, 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 analysis. Okay, bye. <laughs> and after you, Malkovich just sort of calls, okay, bye. So, okay, he's gone. <laughs> and yeah, you guys reconvene in the uh, the conference room to have a uh, discussion. Lieutenant Commander Prowl, is it true, as Lieutenant Commander Jaleop suggested, that you knew that the captain was not a... Um, was was a holographic being and not the uh, actual Malek Jovan this whole time? No, I was unaware of that. Right. Can I? Can I? Can I do some insight here, in or some sort of some sort of detecting lies kind of role? To see I'm going to let you two work that out on your own okay. because I think it's important for you guys to establish rules and boundaries of your own rather than me enforcing them. Okay, that's fair. Um, if that's the case, I'll... I mean... I, I, I'll look around at everyone and like, well, for now, I've set us back onto course at the nearest star base. I'm afraid of contacting our contacts at Starfleet Command about this because I don't know who's compromised, who's been compromised, and who hasn't. That's fair. Commander, may, may I say I uh, took the liberty of locking the hollow systems uh, out for anyone except for me. I think that that's fair under the circumstances. You I have. Are we, we concerned about any other systems being under control by a, the computer core? I mean, at this point, I'm concerned about every system. But the important thing I wanted to tell you is I did ensure that all holographic crew members, uh, registered holographic crew members, were issued uh, mobile limiters. So uh, their rights were not uh, trampled on, unlike uh, the intelligence officer's actions of last week. I I appreciate that <laughs> to, to lay up and... Uh, your knowledge of uh, the laws and civil rights of holographic beings is going to be very important <laughs> as we try and figure out what to do with this being that was impersonating the captain. That being said, is there some way in which we could communicate with this holographic Jovan? Uh, that uh, worked out wicked last time. Ooh, okay. I anticipated your request. You did. I did. So I, I already thought about this. What if I only uh, return power to uh, hollow emitters in conference room? Conference room has no access to, and we lock out verbal commands from computer. You're confident that this individual would not be able to access any of the ship's systems, would just have a physical presence here in this room? Well, yes and no. Uh, I'm confident that I will not be allowing him any more access. Uh, however, uh, if we are worried about him having access, he's much better served uh, uh, projected into the room than just wandering about computer 
unfettered. Mm. Also, Thief. Malkovich may be able to get a, lo a lock on where his uh, program is, is residing if he is conversing with us in... I... Hang on, hang on. We're, we're talking about bringing up like, the captain. Mm -hmm. He's still the captain. He can override your commands. Except I've locked up verbal commands for, for room. You can do that. Yes, it's easy to do. Captain to lay up. Okay, gotcha. No, no, no. Hmm. You go outside in hallway, you give command. It's fine. Before we do this, I want to look into something. I think that that's fair, but would you mind sharing with the group what you're looking into? Of course. I'm going to look into to see if Captain Jovan is even real at all. I think that that's fair. Um, how about we allow Mr. Tolev to set this up, but don't execute it until you have the chance to complete your investigation. I could agree with that. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Prawl, I would like you to roll me an insight and a command, because I think command is bigger. Do you have a higher command or a bigger security? Security. Security. I would say that uh, Jennings could also probably assist you on this. Uh, also doing uh, an insight security. Uh, overall difficulty on this is going to be a five, though. So you're probably going to want to spend momentum and determination here. I am going to go ahead and spend my determination. The only bad information is none. Okay. So that'll start you with two free successes. And then if you wanted to get die, if you wanted to roll four dice total, it would be all of your momentum. Do we want to do it? I think it's worth it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Seems important. Yeah. Security. And my investigation focus. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. All right. Well, that is uh, six successes already with a complication. Uh, yeah. We just need to see the assist from Jennings. All right, so taking that first die, uh, so that is a total of six successes uh, with one momentum. I know what I want the complication to be, but uh, Captain, why don't you uh, provide a little insight about uh, what you actually are? So do they bring me back? They are investigating your origins. So Malik Jovan was real. He did exist but he's been missing for years. Um, last he was seen, he was a first officer aboard another starship um, and he disappeared um, during an away mission. Um, but records of what happened after that just vanished for the last decade. And no one seems to, you can't, no matter how deep you dig, you cannot seem to figure out what happened to him. So I would relay that information. All right. <laughs> Given that, I'm still willing to put him in this room and have a talk with him. Yeah, let's let's chat up a ghost. Come on. <laughs> okay. So then, Tolea locks out verbal commands for com com uh, for whatever uh, that's in this room. Mm -hmm. And then returns power only to the uh, hollow emitters in the conference room. One um, quick thing I want to add. You do find an elaborate trail of like him being alive, but the actual real trail you discover is that he disappeared. Mm -hmm. But like there's like an elaborate like, oh yeah, he was here and here and here, and it looks real, but with your with your intelligence ability, you you discover like, oh, this is all this is all fake. This is not real. Like the actual Jovan disappeared a decade ago and was never heard from again. But then just randomly shows up somewhere else. But yeah, you're uh, you're activating the captain. I would. Wait, and then like... I tell Malkovich to watch for uh, computer uh, signatures that look like a hollow program mm -hmm. operating, so we can track down where he is in the system. All right. So. Jovan does appear in the conference room. 
However, remember, you did roll a complication earlier. Mm. That complication is that Jovan appears with a Romulan disruptor in hand. Oh, good. Yeah. Of course. You, you deactivated me. That was incredibly dishonest for a member of my supposedly loyal crew. It's also incredibly dishonest of you to impersonate Captain Malik Jovan. But I am Captain Malik Jovan, for all intents and purposes. I, I put my hands up. I'm like, you know me. I'm not the one who likes to resort to violence first. I'm willing to talk this out, but you need to tell me the truth. Who are you? I'm Captain Malik Jovan. Your commanding officer, you should obey and listen to what I have to tell you. We're going to the binary star system. No, we're not. But we are. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know that uh, it was nothing personal and that I just shut down all of hollow systems, right? And you were in the room when I said I would do that. Why are you not smart enough to make your own mobile emitter? Smart enough emitter? Twitch, twitch. He fires the, I fire the phaser at the wall. It's like my program's malfunctioning. Yeah. And I would say during that moment, um, I'm going to say between Jennings and Jensen, what are your security scores? Actually, no, what are your daring scores? Uh oh. Uh, nine. Okay. What is, uh, seven. Seven. All right. So in that moment, when the captain's hologram malfunctions, Oh, I shoot. Okay, what are you shooting with, though, is the question. <laughs> uh, well, I, if I'm misinterpreting this, my equipment, I've always got a, a phaser on me, don't I? I would say as a tactical officer, you would not You would maybe have it on the bridge, but in a conference room. Hmm. Right, if fair. you give me two momentum, but you don't have momentum. If you give me two threat, I will say that you do have such a thing. Or I could just tackle him. I've got hand-to-hand -hand combat. You can also just tackle him. Let's do that instead. All right. And Jensen, if you want to assist, you may also do so. All right. So both of you would be rolling a daring security. Captain, you'd be rolling your daring security. And it's really just whoever has the most successes. And I can put a focus on this? Yeah. Obviously. Yep. So Captain, yeah. roll three dice because I'm going to give you the last of my threat. I'm just assisting. Hey, it's gotta... an assist from Jensen. Jennings, that's a total of four. Oh, and yeah. Mr. Jovan only rolls one. So you actually get uh, three momentum. And yeah, you guys both tackle the captain to the ground and get the disruptor away from him. Get off me! Obey me! I am your captain! Yeah, I'm going to let Jennings take the disruptor of the... You're probably going to be better equipped with this than I am. I'm starting to think that whatever this program is, isn't really going to be able to answer any of the questions that we have. Well, I've got him in a crippler crossface. Can I say someone shut this thing off? Yeah, I give the order to shut it off. No! <laughs> So not only were we fooled, but we were fooled by something uh, possibly very unsophisticated. Uh, Mr. Malkovich, did you find the program? Da, I did find it. However, you probably have already guessed this, sir, but it um, was stored in secondary computer core. In fact, entire secondary core was running Captain Program. Yep. We just eject that into space. Yes, we can. Uh, uh, but also uh, just deactivate and separate it. Uh, yes, but I don't recommend for trip to oh. Starbase. What if catastrophic warp failure happened? You know, we want secondary core to enforce but safety the, protocols but the, entire second, but the entire secondary core is just running this cap captain program. well malkovich says entire secondary core you know malkovich 
I'm still okay. online, sir. I can hear everything you are saying. I have <laughs> complete confidence in you. Play about. I don't. I don't know. Could we? We can isolate it and only use it if if needed. Uh, we uh, stop I, being so wait. careful and just take a bold, decisive action and do something. Wait, wait. Why don't we just move program into a mobile emitter and not activate mobile emitter? Why don't we just move it into the sun? What? Wait. Move mobile emitter into brig. He's still thinking being. I I agree. I agree with uh, with Dylan Commander Tolia. Uh, I I and I'll give the order to move it into a mobile emitter and put that in the brig. Um, in the me in the meantime. Uh, I agree that we should also sanction off the secondary computer from the other systems unless it's needed. Wait, but once we move program, okay, whatever. Do you you give order? It's fine. You're a captain now. I am the captain now. <laughs> How long is it till Starbase? Uh, well, if you want to go at warp five, it's about a week. If you want to go at max warp, it's uh, about two days, if I remember the math correctly. I'm going to uh, order Raven to take us up to as maximum warp as, as, as warp as is safe. Warp 9.975. Yes, that will get you there in approximately one day, 23 hours, and 16 minutes. Yep. I would like to ex expedite this as much as possible. Um are there any complications in moving the captain program over to a um, over to a, a manual transmitter? I would say not that come to mind, and you certainly can you know sanction him off on the bridge. But um, I'm just looking at time, and I'm thinking you know where we go from here because it's one of those things where I think we need to talk out of game about where to go from here. Mm -hmm. Um, because you guys found out the secret a little too early, like you were supposed to go to the binary star system <laughs> and find out then. So you guys kind of, you know, cut off the quote unquote railroad a little bit early, which I love, by the way, completely right. kudos to you guys. <laughs> um, but I, I guess what I'm saying is I think I could use a little bit more time to think about it. So if that's nice. okay with you guys, um, we'll cut the session here, but then talk out of character or out of character and out of game. So is that, that cool with everybody? That's yeah, yeah. perfect. Yeah. One right. quick point of order. It seems yes. like something my character would do is to look for or send out a distress call to any other Starfleet vessels in the area to like to provide an escort. We can do so that. Yes. If we get caught in some yeah. bizarre situation, yeah. we're not alone. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I would have recommended that as well. Okay. So that will we'll definitely say that you get back to Narendra under escort. All right. Cool. Well, uh, to anyone watching this live or anyone watching this on YouTube, this is where I'm going to end the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, thank you so much for watching. And see you later, stream. Bye-bye.